Hi, you're Levin. Uh, second lesson of physics now, second lesson of this waves topic. If you haven't had a chance to have a look at the lesson we did yesterday, waves lesson number one, probably is worth going back and having a look at the YouTube video uh, I posted uh, about it yesterday. So you can click uh, on the last lesson and have a look at my YouTube link there at waves lesson one. Uh, so let's get on with uh, waves lesson two again. I'm going to get on with sharing my screen uh, for today's lesson. You're going to need a calculator, um, so you could always use the calculator on your phone. Obviously, you can use your school calculator as well, but we're going to be doing some calculations today. If you want to go and pause the video, get yourself your pen, get yourself your calculator so you're ready for the lesson. That's fine. I'll still be here when you come back. Right. I'm going to get on with sharing my screen here and we shall see if we can get um, the lesson going today. So let's have a look. So. There we go. So there's my screen and there's our lesson. So it's called wave terms uh, and calculations. So last lesson, we looked at these transverse and longitudinal waves, the different types of wave. Um, but the big question is when we're looking at different waves, um, even if I'm looking at just water waves, obviously, if I look in one pond the waves can be different to another one i mean i've got some waves going across this pond here but i could make different waves in that pond i can make waves that look like this they're totally different uh, to the ones we had a second ago or i could change the waves again so they look like this totally totally different waves to the ones we were just looking at so the question is how can scientists describe the difference between all these different sort of waves you can make and it's really all about making measurements uh, we need to take and uh, make some measurements of these waves what size they are how fast they're going how big they are that sort of thing and there's some proper science words for the measurements we can take uh, about waves here so you have, have loads of different waves but if you're going to measure them well let's have a look at a picture of a wave here this is a transverse wave, like a water wave. And the two main measurements you can make on a wave are what we call the amplitude and the wave length of a wave. So you could take a ruler and you could literally do those two measurements of a wave. But the first thing we need to know is where are we going to do our measurements from? Well, the two things we want to think about are really the top and bottom of the wave. In other words, the highest bit of a wave or the bottom of a wave. That's called the peak and the trough of a wave. The highest point the wave goes up to, it's called its peak, like the peak of a mountain. And the lowest part a transverse wave goes down to there is called its trough, T-R-O-U-G-H. The other place we can do some measuring from is the starting position of a wave. A bit like imagining the water when it's flat. If I want to measure how high or how deep a wave is, I need to measure from the starting position when the water wasn't moving. We call that the rest position when it was resting, not moving at all. So when we do measurements of a wave, those are the parts of a wave we can measure to and from. So let's have a look. First thing we can measure then is our wavelength and our amplitude. Now, in lesson, I would normally do this on a worksheet with you and get you to take your rulers and do some measurements, but it's not really easy to do that online, but I'll show you how I would do it. What you do is you would get your wave and you would label the peaks and the troughs on it, and I should have the worksheet sitting here, so at least we can have a look at it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so I would label the peaks, the highest bit of the wave, there you go, there's the highest bit of waves, the peaks there. Or I can go to this wave here, I can label a peak here. So that's the peak of those waves there, the highest bit. Uh, even this wave down here, you can say it's got a peak there and a peak there. So those are the peaks, the highest bit of the wave. Uh, and then I would also label the trough, the lowest bit. There's some label there, the lowest bits of those waves, those are the troughs. There you go, that's a trough, T-R-O-U-G-H. Of that wave there, that's the trough of those waves. There you go, I'll label that in there. So that's a trough. <clears throat> so once you've labeled the peaks and troughs of a wave, um, what you want to do is make these measurements. These measurements of the wavelength of the wave uh, and also the amplitude of wave. So we're going to make a measurement called the wavelength and we're going to make a measurement called the 
amplitude. Once you've marked on the peaks and troughs, you can make that measurement there. Let me just slip, uh, switch screen again. Let's get rid of those. OK, so once we've got the peaks and the troughs labeled on that, what we're going to do is take our ruler. And we start there at zero on that peak and we measure the distance to the next peak. That's about 9.5 centimetres. The distance from one peak to the next peak is called the wavelength. That's the wavelength of that wave would be about 9.5 centimetres. So I could write that in uh, at a wavelength of 9.5 centimetres. Let's have a look. I'll screenshot that. So my wavelength would be 9.5 centimetres. Now, you could do that, not from the peak to the peak. You could do it if you wanted to from the trough to the trough. So from there to there, you get 9.5 centimetres again. It doesn't matter where you measure it. If you measure it from the peak to the peak or the trough to the trough, you'll still get that same wavelength. So whenever you're measuring 9.5, it's not great for writing on that bit of software. So you can measure the wavelength by measuring from peak to peak or from trough to trough. OK, next measurement I'm going to want to make of the waves is called the amplitude. There you go, it's the amplitude in there. And the amplitude is the distance from the resting position up to the peak. So it's really the height of the wave. One way of thinking about it is how high the wave is. So perfectly ruler on its side. And I would move that. Let's have it from zero. And that's about, ooh, it's hard to read that. It's not the best graphic there. It's about five centimeters, the amplitude of that wave. So I could write five centimeters in for the amplitude of the wave. So it's five centimeters. So measuring the wavelength and the amplitude of a wave is all about finding the peaks and troughs. Um, then I can measure the wavelength of a wave. The wavelength of a wave remembers the distance from one peak to the next peak. Or you could do it from one trough to the next trough. And I could write in my wavelength there. So from peak to peak, there you go, I get my ruler. Oh my goodness gracious me, get my ruler. Do me distance from there to there. And that is one wavelength of the wave there. So from peak to peak or from trough to trough. I mean, go from trough to trough there. See if I can do a better straight line this time. Oh, no, much better. Goodness gracious. Uh, that's a wavelength as well. Now you've got to measure it exactly from one peak to one peak or from one trough to one trough. And then we said the other measurement we could make is the amplitude. The amplitude of the wave is the distance all the way down to the trough or all the way up to the peak. So from the rest position all the way up to the peak or from the rest position all the way down to the trough. And that is our amplitude. So you might have to measure the wavelength or the amplitude, if I draw that in straight, oh, it's drawing a straight line, it's not my best skill today. So that's the amplitude of the wave, that distance from the rest position up to the peak or from the rest position down to the trough. So you can measure that with your ruler. So measuring the wavelength and amplitude uh, on those waves is one way of describing if one wave is bigger than another wave or one wave is smaller than another wave. Uh, and those are the different measurements you could make uh, on that. OK, so that's the wavelength and the amplitude. Uh, but we've got a bit of a problem there, because although you can do that all right on transverse waves, it's a bit harder, harder on longitudinal waves. See, longitudinal waves don't have peaks and troughs. So how can we measure a wavelength or an amplitude on a longitudinal wave? Well, that means we have to look at what longitudinal waves are made from. Longitudinal waves are made from parts of the wave which are more tightly squashed together, like these parts of the wave. And they're made from parts of the wave which are more spread further apart. So you've got these tightly packed together areas, like these squashed up bits on the spring. And you've got these spread out areas, like where the spring is spread far apart or in a sound wave you've got areas where the air particles are squashed close together and you've got areas where the air particles are spread far apart and the special name for those we don't have peaks and troughs in longitudinal waves instead what we talk about is the parts of the wave which are close together we call those compressions 
so the compression, and they spread out parts of the wave are called the rarefaction, so the rarefactions in a longitudinal wave. So instead of having peaks and troughs, high and low parts of the wave, we've got rarefactions and compressions. So a longitudinal wave has rarefactions and compressions. If you're going to do the measurements on a longitudinal wave, you measure the distance between two compressions. So you would get your pencil, you'd mark on where the two compressions are. You put a dot right in the middle of the compressions where the parts of the wave are squashed tight together. And then you can measure the wavelength between those two dots there. So that one will give you a wavelength of about 8.8 .8 centimeters. So we're not measuring from peak to peak because longitudinal waves don't have peaks. Instead, we measure between the middle of two compressions. So again, I would normally give you a, a worksheet to do on that there where you could go in and you can mark the middle. You can mark your compressions on the middle of those two there and you could get your rulers and you could get those and you could measure the distance between two compressions you marked on there. Uh, and you could practice doing your measuring the wavelength of these longitudinal waves, there you go, compression to compression. There's one compression to the next compression. And I would get my ruler and that comes to about 1.6 centimeters. So you'd get um, some practice measuring the wavelength of those longitudinal waves. So that's one way we can describe the difference uh, between what waves look like. We can measure their wavelength. We can measure their amplitude. But of